Welcome to a video by Royal Christ College and in today's video we're going to be talking about hypothyroidism. Now you can follow us on our Instagram channel at Royal Christ College or you can likewise follow and subscribe to us on our YouTube and look at our endocrinology section or go on to our website at www.royalchristcollege.co.uk. We're going to be mainly focusing on Hashimoto's in the hypothyroidism section. Now to understand hypothyroidism, let's look at the anatomy. So on screen we have the thyroid cartilage as well as the thyroid organ. We know the thyroid organ is causing production of T3 and T4 which leads to the metabolic process. Now to understand this you need to think about the higher centers. So we, let's look at hypothalamic pituitary axis. We have the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary and thyroid. The TRH is signaled to release TSH from the anterior pituitary which goes on to produce T3 and T4 from the thyroid and they're in a positive feedback leading to metabolic process. Now T3 and T4 can be caused negative loop feedback inhibiting TRH as well as TSH and the body is in a state like this. Now let's clearly think about what does hypothyroidism mean then. If you understand this then you should simply understand what hypothyroidism is. Hypothyroidism is defined or in definition terms it's simply stated as a clinical syndrome or a deficiency in the thyroid hormone. This leads to a decreased metabolic process. So there's a decrease in T3 and T4 leading to a decreased metabolic process in the body. So you can imagine what this would do. This would cause a lot of increase in weight, there will be a load of symptoms and signs which we'll talk about in this video. Now what are the causes of hypothyroidism? The number one cause is radioactive iodine or radioactive sources, uh, hypo and hyplasia of the thyroid gland, decreased or increased salt iodine in, um, um, intake as well as inborn genetic errors, so whilst you're born you have genetic errors or you have some drugs, especially amiodarone or lithium as well as interferon alpha. So when prescribing amiodarone, lithium and interferon alpha to your patients, be aware that these are contraindicated within hypothyroidism. Now the most common one is iodine intake because iodine intake deficiency of iodine leads to cretinism as well as stratum per magnum. You can search these up to understand what these conditions mean. Now, let's look into a bit more detail. Let's think about the different types as well as other causes. These can include infections such as Staphylococcus as well as Strep B, and mainly the most important and common one is the antibody. So basically, this is inborn genetic errors. So you have some sort of autoantibodies which directly attack your thyroid, leading to destruction of the thyroid cells leading to decreased T3 and T4 production, overall reducing, re reducing the metabolic processes. Now, what is the hypothyroidism? Now it can be seen in both infants as well as adults. In infants, when this occurs, usually what happens is usually you see a lot of changes in a mental retardation as well as you see a decrease in the growth development. And this can, can cause a lot of problems. So there's a marked slowing of growth development and there's also a mental retardation. These are the two main ones I want you to remember. Now other physical signs include things such as abnormal pelvis. So these kids usually end up with a larger pelvis or a smaller pelvis than a normal. They have short hands or they can even have broad hands. They have a broad flat face, slanting face as well as abnormal ears. They have a fine coarse hair type. They may have congenital heart disease. They may have diminished muscle tone, enlarged colon, as well as they may also have big toes or wide toes, which are wide apart from other normal kids. They have intestinal blockages, leading to some sort of stenosis or pyloric stenosis. But the main ones I want you to remember is growth development, mental retardation, diminished muscle tone. Now, in adult, on adults, on the other hand, it's completely different. When hypothyroidism occurs in adults, they have generalized decrease in metabolism leading to weight gain, so they have a slowed or a bradycardic heart, they may present with cyanosis, they may deposit, because of deposition of glycosaminoglycans in the skin, the skin usually appears much more thick and turgid and they may have periorbital edema around the eyes as well as in the neck region. They have goiter sometimes because of diffuse enlargement of the thyroid. They usually have a puffy dull face with fine coarse hair periorbital to edema, which you can see in the image, and there's also some sort of thinning of eyebrows. So if a patient comes into you with thinning eyebrows, puffy face, think hypothyroidism compared to hypo. So we can compare the two now on screen. So on left, you have the hypo, on left of the, 
patient or right on the image on your screen and on the left of the image you have hyper so in hypo there's bradycardia but in hyper tachy there's a goiter there may be goiter or there may be goiter with bruise you can watch our thyroid examination video on our channel on forumchristcollege.co.uk it presents the hypo usually has angina as well as atrial fibrillation compare the both in hypo there's menorrhagia but in hyper there's oligomenorrhagia usually there's a generalized term or in hypo there is sensitivity to cold depression mental retardation and the most important and the most common one that you see in your clinics and practice is weight gain whereas on the other hand in hyper there is a weight loss even when you try to increase your calorie intake heat intolerance as well as anxiety and other nervousness and mental retardation problems so in hypo the liver condition is usually normal so if you do remember back from our hyperthyroidism video in hypo there's elevated enzymes so now let's look at different types of classifications involved within hypothyroidism so one we have primary also known as thyroid failure now examples of this would be Hashimoto's which we'll discuss in detail in this video which is a chronic autoimmune condition other conditions include idiopathic conditions meaning they have no known cause secondary is usually caused by hyperpituitarism which means there's some sort of pituitary adenoma or some sort of pituitary problem which is causing decreased of, decrease of TSH then there's tertiary and there's pituitary resistance meaning that the cells are resistant to T3 and T4 effects so metabolism doesn't really take place what is epidemiology now it's congenital hypothyroidism is one of the most rare thing so it's one in four thousand but it's more common in adults above 65 years of age and even more in 75 years of age and it most commonly affects females compared to males in a ratio of 10 is to 1 especially in the advanced ages now moving on to the diagnosis test here we usually your clinician or the person in charge would usually take a blood test as well as immunoglobulin test blood test usually consists of tsh t3 and t4 from that you can kind of deduce whether it's hypo or hyper and the antibodies involved are anti-tpl and anti-tg if it's a primary hypothyroidism usually blood test is necessary and secondary meaning if there's a pituitary problem you will need to check pituitary hormones like fsh lh estradiol testosterone and various other hormones so don't really forget that if you think it's a secondary so make sure you check your sex hormones now Hashimoto's also known as a chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis so lymphocytic meaning that there is lymphocytes involved and thyroiditis meaning inflammation so on screen you have an illustration of what happens in chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis also known as Hashimoto's it's caused by decreased iodine levels and most common causes and is the most common cause of hypothyroidism and it's, it's usually common in 45 to 65 years of age now on screen you have the thyroid epithelium you can see there's three different mechanisms so you have a CD8 cytotoxic T cell which is basically an autoimmune condition which causes T cell mediated cytotoxicity so basically it destroys your own thyroid cells we also have a second CD4 plus TH1 cell which recognizes and activates macrophages which go on to de demolish your own thyroid cells and leading to thyroid cell injury finally the most common you have plasma cells causing antithyroid antibodies these antibodies then bind to natural killer cells and these natural killer cells then go on and bind with the thyroid cells leading to antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity leading to thyroid injury so there's three now the most common symptoms that you should have seen on the screen in especially with those with Hashimoto's include they have goiter and this is a diffuse type of goiter where there can be a diffuse enlargement there's usually weight gain there's also other conditions such as cool rough dry skin they may have puffy face and they may also have large puffy hands as well because of edema puffy face usually would have periodic to edema skin color changes are sometimes common especially they turn yellow due to reduced keratin conversion into vitamin A so vitamin A is ne necessary to keep skin on the histological slides you can see an enlarged thyroid gland and lymphocytic infiltration when the blue is a synapse staining and then you can also see herpes cells so thanks for watching this video make sure you check out our Instagram because we release the cheat sheets which is a summary notes of this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel once again thank you for watching the video